And before I start, I would like uh, to explain um, a little bit what I mean, <coughs> not by Rasayana, because I will leave this term untranslated uh, uh, throughout my talk, because this is what it's about. But I would like to say a few words uh, of what I mean with uh, classical Sankhya Yoga. So I use the term uh, uh, classical Sankhya Yoga here uh, with reference to, to a system of knowledge that um, uh, um, developed uh, yeah, in the so-called classical period uh, of uh, pre-modern South Asian history um, around um, um, the end of the 4th or the beginning of the 5th uh, century in the Gupta area where we can, can witness a very fascinating fusion of of different uh, uh, intellectual and religious worldviews, uh, Vedic Brahmanism and uh, uh, yeah, Shramana religions of, of Greater Magadha, um, they merge into each other, and as a result, we have uh, literature that we, we did not have before, and in world we said we have, did not have before. And one of these yeah, very fascinating uh, accounts of certain worldview is uh, the Patanjali Yoga Shastra, um, a work on, uh, on, on yoga on the background of a certain philosophy, of a dualist philosophy of Sankhya. And when I'm talking about classical Sankhya Yoga, I mainly refer to, to the Patanjali Yoga Shastra, that is the Yoga Sutra together with the uh, um, so-called Yoga Vashya, which uh, in, in my view have been composed as um, a, a unified whole, as a single work, and not as uh, one can read frequently in secondary literature, as a commentary, uh, as a base text, and then uh, as a commentary. So when we have one uh, wants to address uh, the question what Rasayana means in, in the Patanjali Yoga Shastra, there is one uh, passage which is highly relevant, and this is Patanjali Yoga Shastra 41, which uh, deals with uh, the um, different origins of superpowers or uh, superhuman powers. Yeah, the Sanskrit term is city, and there we read uh, superhuman powers are generated by birth drugs, mantras, asceticism, or absorption. absorption. Yeah, this is the Sutra text, and then we have a very, very uh, brief explanation of these um, five <coughs> sources of superhuman powers, or more, more or less uh, uh, impressionist uh, thought on these uh, terms. The power generated by birth occurs in a separate body. Uh, I think that this refers uh, to the possibility that uh, by one's uh, birth, um, according to the law of karma, one can reach a different uh, position um, in heaven or in another um, uh, realm of, uh, of the cosmos where then one can execute uh, powers that are uh, extraordinary. Then uh, we have the explanation by drugs means from Rasayana in the mansions of Asuvat. Now This is uh, the passage we, are, uh, uh, we will analyze uh, further in, in the course of this talk. In the mention of the Asuvat and the like. By mantras means attaining the power of levitation, to become minute, and so on. The superhuman power generated by asceticism is the power to reach whatever one wants. For example, one goes wherever one wants to go in any form one desires. The powers are generated by absorption have already been explained in the previous section of the present work. And uh, that's true. Um, the third uh, chapter of the Patanjali Yoga Shastra, the Vibhuti Pada, that deals with these superhuman powers. So, yeah, then the question is, uh, yeah, what is meant by uh, um, superhuman powers generated by, by drugs, by oshadi, by, by herbal, uh, by herbs? And, uh, yeah, what, what does Rasayana mean and uh, what does the mention of the Asavas uh, have to do uh, with all this? And in uh, order to uh, answer this question, I would like to have a look at uh, what the commentators have to say, and there I start with the commentary of uh, Vashasvati Mishra, who first who lived in the 10th century. He says um, in the Tatra Vajradi on Patanjali Yoga Shastra 41, he, and that refers to the uh, author of the, the Basha, he explains superhuman powers generated by drugs uh, in the mentions of the Asma, this quotation. It is well known that if a human being reaches for some reason or other a mention of Asuras and uses the Vasayana that lovely Asura maidens have presented to him, he attains freedom from old age and death and other superhuman powers. Or by using Vasayana in this very world, in this very world, one obtains superhuman powers like the sage Mandavya who inhabited um, the Vintya mountains uh, after he 
or because of he had used uh, Wasser. Yeah, that uh, does not help uh, very much. Um, it's still a little bit cryptic, and yeah, one, uh, two, two uh, different options. Either Vasha's party uh, uh, was also at loss uh, how to explain this, and uh, then he uh, invented something, or he had some some knowledge that we don't share, and uh, which is uh, um, uh, that, that we don't have. <coughs> And yeah, it's uh, then our task to evaluate which of the two options is the more uh, probable one. And um, I think with regard to the first um, explanation that he is giving, namely that uh, Vasayana is applied in uh, uh, the mentions of the uh, uh, Asuras by, by, Asuras made, by Asura maidens, by, by lovely girls, I think there are a couple of uh, passages to, with it, to which this um, can be related. For example, uh, pertinent uh, um, passages from Patanjali Yoga Shastra uh, 351, which deals with different categories of yogis. You know, maybe there are four different categories of yogis that are uh, classified according to their spiritual progress: and the beginner and, and advanced one, and then the finally advanced one. This is the third one. And with this, with regard to this uh, third category. Um, this is a quite difficult stage of progress because there the yogi may be addressed by heavenly beings who try to distract him from his yogic past, try to persuade him to give up his uh, spiritual ambitions and uh, uh, yeah, to follow other uh, aims. Yeah? And uh, in this regard we, we read there, um, if heavenly beings, that is the gods, Notice in this regard the purity of the mind of a Brahmana who reaches the stage of spiritual progress called the sweep. They invite him to the heavenly places. And then they say, hello, please stay here, please enjoy yourself here. This pleasure is lovely, this girl is lovely, this Rasayana prevents old age and death. So we have here usage of the word Rasayana as a, a miraculous substance that may be consumed in a different realm of, of the universe and it's uh, meant uh, to prevent old age and death. Jaram Rekyum Bharati is the Sanskrit expression. And I think that uh, Vajraspati had uh, something, uh, um, yeah, th this passage in mind when he wrote his commentary uh, on Patanjali Yoga Shastra uh, for one. And uh, of course, um, yeah, uh, we have slightly parallel um, narrative uh, accounts of comparable ideas in other parts of the Sanskrit literature, uh, the one passage that came into my mind uh, would be um, the dialogue between Nachiketas and uh, Death in the Kata Upanishad. Um, this is uh, a narrative where when Nachiketas reaches uh, uh, the house of Death and he uh, gets uh, three question, uh, three boons granted by, by Death. Um, and uh, the third boon that uh, Nachiketas uh, utters, although the philological details are, are very, very tricky and complicated, has something to do with, with a soteriological uh, aim that, that he is pursuing. And uh, death is trying to, um, to persuade him to give up this, uh, this, this boon. And this is the passage that I would like to, to show you here in the translation of Patrick uh, Olivelle. Yeah, death says uh, to him, in order to. Yeah, mm -hmm make him not uh, pursue his wish any further. He says that if you would think this is an equal wish, you may choose wealth together with a long life. So here we again have the um, uh, long life as one of the desirable aims. Achieve prominence, Nachiketas, in this wild world. That will make you enjoy your desires at will. You may ask freely for all those desires hard to obtain in this small world. Look at these lovely girls with chariots and lutes. Girls of this sort are unobtainable by men. So here are two motives uh, that uh, also occurred in the passage that uh, we had seen before. On the one hand, uh, the opportunity to, to gain uh, extended lifespan, and then on the other hand, uh, um, the motive of uh, uh, enjoying uh, heavenly uh, girls. Um, so um, we can uh, at this point make a preliminary conclusion about uh, what Vajra's party had to say. Um, with regard to the Patanjali Yoga Shastra for one, yeah, according to Varsha's party, Pasayana is an elixir of longevity. Yeah, this elixir may become available to humans in Asura mansions, 
that is in places that apparently are located in a different realm of the cosmos than the human world. And Vasha's party also believed that elixirs may become available in this world, like in the case of Mandavya, yeah, yeah, he mentioned this. However, this legendary account of Mandavya's access to Rasa and to the continuation of his life in the Vintia mountain is uh, apparently lost. There is a famous story about uh, a sage, uh, Ani Mandavya, in the Mahabharata, uh, who uh, lived uh, for a long time, uh, continued his living, although he was supposed to die. Uh, he was impaled as a, a punishment for a crime that he had not committed. But uh, this narrative uh, does not mention uh, his living uh, in the Vintia Mountains, and it also does not uh, uh, mention that uh, Rasa or Rasayana was uh, in one way or other uh, involved in, in, this, uh, in this process. So I would say probably uh, Vajaspati Mishra knew a story about a different man Mandavya uh, that is lost uh, nowadays. But what we can see from this is yeah, that uh, he believed in some miraculous way in which uh, uh, Rasayana uh, may, be, uh, may be applied. Yeah? So what is also interesting to see is that Vashaspati neither refers to Vasayana as a branch of Ayurveda, nor does he connect uh, passages of the Patanjali Yoga Shastra, the discussion with alchemy. And Vashaspati does also not explain how he relates the word Vasayana of the Vasha to the concept of herbal drugs, Oshadi from the Sutra text. So that is a little bit uns unsatisfactory. So we can conclude that he believed maybe in plants growing somewhere in other realms of, of the universe, or miraculous plants that, that grow somewhere in, in the Vintia Mountains, but that are very difficult or hard to find. Like we are aware of passages in, in the Ramayana where also uh, yeah, miraculous uh, herbal plants uh, are uh, obtained there. Yeah, uh, so far for Vajraspati Mishra, now I would like to uh, talk about uh, the second uh, commentary. Uh, the Patanjali Yoga Shastra Ivana, composed by a certain Shankara in uh, approximately the 8th century. So, uh, yeah, the identity uh, of this Shankara with the author of the Brahma Sutra Basha is uh, highly disputed, and uh, I would uh, tend to the opinion that uh, these two people are not identical. Yeah? But I think that this commentary is an ancient commentary by a person who had some uh, good knowledge of, uh, of uh, classical yoga. So it's a very important commentary, one of the, I would say, one of the most important uh, sources of information when it comes to the interpretation of the Patanjali Yoga Shastra. And it's also important for theological reasons, because the base text of this commentary uh, um, has uh, many instances where we can reach an early stage of the transmission. So what does Shankara say? He says that uh, superhuman uh, powers are generated by birth, drugs, mantras, asceticism, or absorption. This is a quotation of the Sutra. <laughs> then he says, power generated by birth occurs in separate bodies, in different bodies produced, for example, by yoga and so on, in a heaven and so on. And that would uh, support the interpretation of uh, um, superhuman powers attained by birth that I had given at the beginning of my talk, namely that uh, yeah, by good actions, yeah, like for example yoga practice, one can accumulate good karma that then leads to a rebirth in a, uh, uh, in a favorable realm of existence like, like uh, the heaven. Yeah, and then uh, he goes on, uh, by drugs means from Vasayana in the mention of asuras by eating plants like soma and amalaka without abandoning, uh, abandoning a previous body. Yeah? And uh, these uh, two plants that he is mentioning, Soma and Amalaka, that clearly points to Vasayana in an Ayurvedic uh, context. Yeah? We have uh, uh, long uh, accounts of um, Ayurveda treat, uh, uh, treatments, um, uh, Vasayana treatments, and um, yeah, one passage that I would like to discuss uh, in this uh, connection is the one that had, has been uh, uh, discussed uh, before uh, here in this, this conference, namely the, the definition of uh, Rasayana uh, in Chikitsa Stana 1.1728. But, but I tend to translate it a little bit differently from what we had seen so far, not uh, so much uh, with regard to the beginning where we read through Rasayana, a man, yeah, that's important, obtains a long life, mindfulness, intelligence, health, youthfulness, excellence of strength, complexion and voice, the greatest capacity of body and senses, perfection of speech, 
Clark City, yeah, that, that we have the world city um, that is uh, so important for the passage in the 500 Yoga Shasta, fame and beauty. And then Asayana is well known to be the means for obtaining the celebrated assets beginning with the essence of life, that would be a rasa. And I, I take this uh, uh, final uh, line here to be um, yeah, a kind of etymology of what Vasayana actually means. Yeah? The question, of course, is what, what does uh, ras, rasa dinam uh, mean, yeah, rasa and so on. And um, the commentator Shaka Panigata, he says that by using Adi, yeah, Shalaka would also refer to Smriti, Meda, and so on, yeah, to the other things that uh, uh, have been mentioned here in this, um, in the first line. And if we take this seriously, then Rasa yeah, can only be a synonym of Dirgam Ayus yeah, here. And I, I, I think this is uh, quite uh, convincing, this explanation, because uh, what it's all about here uh, in this definition is that Rasayana is a lava upaya, a means for attaining something. And if you refer rasa here at this instance uh, to the bodily elements, it's a little bit awkward to think uh, that uh, uh, rasayana might be a means to obtain these uh, bodily consistencies because they are already, already there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but uh, what, what is most important here is, of course, that the reference that the uh, author of the Vivarana made uh, to, to rasayana. Um, it is a very appropriate Rasayana as a means to obtain superhuman powers. One can read this uh, uh, very much like this. We have this Vak city that uh, Stagma already told us uh, uh, is by some commentators interpreted in the way that whatever um, um, the person who had undergone Rasayana says that this becomes true, that it's a miraculous power of uh, forming, so to say, the course of events according to what one says. And of course, uh, the Hindriya Balam Param, uh, that's a formulation that would uh, fit very well to um, uh, also to the cities uh, in the, the Patanjali Yoga Shastra, the exceptional capacities of the, of the senses to see things that are remote or very close uh, uh, or even hidden. And of course, Deha uh, Balaya, these are all the uh, powers that, that the human body has. So, um, yeah, this. The idea that the Vivarana Kara is bringing in here is uh, absolutely uh, appropriate. As we uh, uh, all know here from, from this book of uh, Dominic Boyas, The Roots of Ayurveda, uh, where uh, we have a passage um, on the effects of uh, Rasayana according to the Sushul Prasamita, and there we read in the translation of Dominic Boyas, the visionary man who makes uh, use of the king of plants, Soma, yeah, that's, that's mentioned truly knows all sacred knowledge. He moves like a god through the whole world with infallible willpower. So he moves like a god through the whole world with infallible willpower. This is exactly uh, a city that is described here that we had also seen in the Patanjali Yoga Shastra as the city uh, derived from uh, asceticism. Yeah? So uh, obviously uh, the gaining of, of uh, superhuman powers is one important aspect uh, of uh, Rasayana therapy in um, in Ayurveda. So there uh, remains, of course, uh, uh, a big problem uh, with the um, interpretation of the author of the Vivarana, and this is uh, the mention of the Asuras. Now, he doesn't say anything about the Asura Bhavanas. Uh, and uh, yeah, Dominic had a very intriguing idea about this, yeah, because uh, the special Vasayana therapy involving Soma is described in the Sushil uh, Sanghita and also in the Shalaka Sanghita is applied in a special building, yeah? Um, yeah? Um, a building called Kuti. Yeah? And uh, the Kuti has three rooms, which each uh, one is situated inside the other one. And then the idea uh, could be, yeah, uh, um, yeah, could this building have been termed Asura Bhavana in the Patanjali Yoga Shastra or in the Vivarana? And uh, yeah, although this idea is uh, uh, very attractive and uh, very nice, I would say that the answer is uh, negative. Yeah? Uh, I have uh, looked around. Bhavana uh, usually does not mean a small hut that you can erect, but it's, it's more, more something like a palace. Yeah? We have in, in the Charaka Sangita, it's Indra Bhavana, where the, uh, the Rishis go, we have the palace of Indra. I've looked through the, uh, also uh, through the, the Mahabharata. We have Kubera Bhavana, Shiva Bhavana, and also always Bhavanas are, are quite uh, 
I would say, uh, elaborate uh, buildings that, that house uh, persons uh, yeah, of a high stature. It's not a small hut that you can uh, build. Because in Chalaka Sangita, um, account of the Rasayana therapy said that one should build especially this uh, uh, certain house for the therapy. Yeah? So I would say, uh, no, sorry, um, it's, it's not possible uh, to identify uh, the Kuti uh, with the Asura Bhavana. One can um, find um, yeah, possible solutions to the problem of Asura Bhavana if one looks at uh, different uh, cosmologies. We have in the Buddhist uh, cosmology, as reflected in Pali literature, um, a part of the cosmos which is called the uh, realm of the Asuras. And, and this the realm of, of the Asuras is called Asura Bhavana. Uh, this part of the cosmos is located at the lowest level of the Mount uh, Meru. Yeah, there's a nice story that the Asuras originally uh, lived uh, together with Indra, but then they drank too, drank too much and then they were thrown out of uh, of, uh, of Mero and, uh, <laughs> but because they had committed very, very many good deeds, they got a, a similar nice place to live in at the, uh, at the bottom of Mount Mero. And that's called Asura Bhavana. And in Jaina cosmolo cosmology, there is a class of gods which are called Bhavana Vasins, those who live in palaces. And um, in, uh, in the Jaina mythology, the Asuras, they also uh, live in this part of the underworld in the, uh, they belong to the, to the Baba Navasins. So I would say that very, very probably, uh, yeah, th this may be yeah, mm, the direction in which one has to look uh, if it comes to Rasayana practices uh, applied in, in um, the mentions of, uh, of Asuras. The problem is I was not able to find any real uh, reference uh, to, to the Asaras that, that, that they apply Rasayana in, in one way uh, of, uh, or the other. So now time is running out, I come to the conclusion. Yeah? Chakra relates the word Rasayana uh, from the Bhasha to Ayurvedic conceptions, which indicates strongly that he was acquainted with Rasayana as a branch of Ayurveda. Shankara does not show any awareness of Rasayana as alchemy. And the fact that Shankara does not make, and this is also uh, quite nice because it's still hotly uh, disputed how old this commentary is. There are some people saying that the uh, Vivana is a very modern commentary, maybe from the 14th century or something like this. And if it would be such a late medieval commentary, I think that uh, he, he might have uh, tended to, uh, um, to refer Rasayana maybe also to Alchemy. Yeah? So that it does not so, uh, is uh, maybe interesting. So the fact that Shankara does not make his uh, understanding of the Asura Bhavanas, uh, uh, of the word Asana, Asura Bhavana explicit, and that he does not explain how it might be related to Ayurvedic forms of Rasayana, makes it doubtful whether his explanation matches Patanjali's intention. Taking into consideration Patanjali Yoga Shastra 351, uh, it appears quite likely that Patanjali in uh, Patanjali Yoga Shastra 41 thought primarily of Vasayana treatment in a different realm of the cosmos than the world we live in. Nevertheless, uh, uh, his use of the word Ivam Ali and so on suggests that he imagined several ways in which herbal drugs may lead to superhuman powers. Mm -hmm. And then the final uh, analysis, however, has to be stated that the Patanjali Yoga Shastra does not contain any clear reference to Ayurveda or to alchemical forms of Vasayana. Thank you. Thank you.